the undisputed glamour event of this week's NFL Combine is something called the 40 yard dash. All the NFL players, one by one, they line up. They're gonna try to cover 40 yards in what, four and a half seconds or less? It's the one time too when regular guys start thinking about their speed. How did we get faster at the 40 yard dash? We've got Travel Gaines from Athletic Gaines here and you've trained a ton of guys who have run incredibly fast in the 40. Who are some of the guys you've trained and what's the secret to it? Well, some of the top guys I've trained have been uh, DK Metcalf, Devontae Adams. I've literally had some of the fastest guys at each position in the history of the NFL. The perfect 40 yard dash is running 19 steps. So as long as we can work on our strike length and our strike frequency, that's gonna make sure that we get the best 40 possible. So we're gonna look at some different movements today that's gonna look at strike length and strike frequency that's gonna help Ab run the best 40 in the world. And I've gotta get faster. So I've gotta get it done in 19 steps. How does 19 steps work when you have so many different athletes of different heights, different leg lengths? How is it 19 steps and where did you come up with that number? It's funny because it's not necessarily a height thing, it's all about uh, covering ground. So again, your stride length and your strike frequency is the best way to run the 40. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're short, tall, this is a race that anybody can run if you perfect it and really learn your technique. So you've got three drills for us. They're all about those little things that are gonna help me eliminate wasted movement. And then we've got a little strength in there because this is a power event too. Let's get to it. Our first drill, to be honest, is a drill that I feel like I wouldn't normally take seriously, but the 40 is a super technical race, and this is all about technique. What are we doing? So right now we're gonna work on arm swings. This is one of the biggest things that athletes can correct in the short amount of time they have to be ready for the combine. So ideally, you wanna keep a nice tall back. You wanna make sure that you're going from cheek to cheek. Or like I like to say, you're taking candy out of your pocket and putting it in your mouth. That's the best way to remember it. So right now we're gonna start with some five pound dumbbells. All right. Get technique, good tall back, chin slightly down, that's perfect. And we're gonna start with one hand uh, at the, uh, that's perfect. Now, you're gonna start moving at a good tempo, right there, perfect, keep your elbows in tight, elbows in tight, elbows in tight, good. When I say go, you're gonna run your arms as fast, as hard as you can. Go, good, faster, faster, good technique, same fast, same fast, same fast, and relax. Now what you wanna do is you wanna put the weights down. Yeah. Same thing, let's work the technique, all body weight, Open your hands up, open your hands up. And when I say go, you're gonna run your hands as fast as hard as you can, okay? So nice and slow. Okay. Good technique, keep the technique, keep the technique. When I say go, you can go as fast as hard as you can while keeping your technique. Go! Good, perfect, 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 and relax, good job. Takes a lot more out of you than you realize there. I think it's a different drill too, because I, I, as soon as I start pumping my arms, and I guess that just shows how the arms work with the legs. Exactly. As soon as I start pumping, I feel like my body already wants to move, my lower body already wants to do things, which I guess is the purpose of it, right? Well, people have to always understand, the faster your arms move, the faster your legs move. That's the biggest thing for 40. In terms of formula and how we're doing this, we're going for about 10 seconds all out with the weights, then removing the weights, essentially deloading our body a little bit. That way we can be explosive the way we would be naturally, really working that arm swing. And it's weird because I feel like my back working, I'm starting to get a little bit of muscular fatigue up there too. Absolutely, and for this drill, you guys wanna do this three times a week because this is very, very important. Uh, this is really good for muscle memory. This is really good for technique. This is really good for improving your 40-yard dash time. Where are we putting it in the workout? Is it at the beginning? Is it at the end? Is it is it not part of the workout at all? And it's kind of my warm up. So, this is something you wanna do every, every single time between your warm up in between your actual on field movement drills for your speed. So, those arm pumps, and that's going to get me to that 19 steps. Show me two others. Let's go. So, you've given me a drill to clean up my arm swing. What are we going to do next? I think the biggest thing is now that you understand how your arms work, let's see how they really work with their legs. And so, what I want you to do now, Eb, is I want you to stand nice and tall, hands down on your side, do not move your hands. And when I say go, I want you to do high knee pumps right in place. When I say go again, I want you to run your arms as fast as you can. What you're gonna see is the faster your arms are moving, your legs will be forced to run just as faster. So let's go ahead and do it. Okay. Here we go. And go, just like that. Perfect, 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 perfect. And arm swings on, go. There you go, look at that. Look at that, there we go. Perfect, five, four, three, two, relax. There we go. Wow, first of all, it takes a lot more out of me than it should. Yeah, but you can instantly feel it. So this drill is as much about building any kind of strength as it is about creating awareness of what my arms are doing during the running motion, right? Exactly, because again, the, the thing that people fail to realize every time is that their arms are important. Going across your body is counterproductive. Being all wild is counterproductive. But making sure you understand really a great fluid motion, great technique, it's gonna make you run faster. Cover those 19 steps for the 40. I think that's so, so important too. The thing you were saying about people bringing their arms across, and I feel it there because my legs, when I start with my legs, 
I'm instantly going in one direction. And that's gonna help my arms stay straight. You're right, because when people start to twist their arms across their body, that's where there's energy leaks. That's where you're not translating all your velocity forward, right? Absolutely. Love it, cool. How often am I doing this? So you're gonna work your arm swings, you're gonna work your leg pumps with your arm swings three times a week, uh, right between your warm up and between your actual workout. So we have worked on our arm swing, we have put our arms together with our legs. Now let's build a little power in our last move. I love it, let's go. So the last thing we've got to cover here, we focused on the little things. Now we want to get a little power in. Can you talk about why leg power is important in the 40 yard dash, maybe more important than it is in those longer races and how we're going to attack it? Well, again, two key things we're in the fast 40, stride length, stride frequency. Stride length will really help you out from the techniques stuff that we did. Stride frequency will come from the power that you put in the ground. So I think doing these walking lunges with good technique, good knee drive, it's going to really help out your stride frequency and your stride length to run those 19 steps, that perfect 40 forever. Now, why walking lunges as opposed to just stationary lunges or, or reverse lunges? It's just a different variation. I like the walking lunge because again, it forces you to engage your core. You're still moving forward. You have to step over your uh, your calf every time, keep your knee up and your toe up with a great dose of flexion, and you still work on your technique by working on your strength at the same time. Exactly, basically I'm going somewhere, which is a lot like the 40 yard dash. Okay, let's do this. Let's go. Good, really drive your knee up. Perfect, I want you to step over your calf. Big drive, that's it, good, perfect. Straight line, engage your core, good, good. Really drive the knee, good toe dorsal flexion. Good job, babe. And one more rep. Perfect. So should I take this bar off my back? Yeah, you should. Yeah. <laughs> that was kind of cool too. So that is the walking lunge. And I felt all the things you told me I would, especially in terms of core activation when I have that load on my back. Talk to me a little bit about sets and reps for this. So the biggest thing with this exercise, I like to mix and match it with kind of a, a walking lunge and a step up. So one day doing walking lunges, one day doing step ups. I like to do four sets, five reps each leg, twice a week. And you wind up feeling it a ton in your glutes. I get why you kind of want to alternate it with step ups. It becomes that idea of hip extension, except I think it's really cool with the walking lunge because once I start stepping it through, it's basically a loaded runner stride. Exactly. So we went over arm swings. You've given me some leg power. I've got everything I need to juice on my 40. Thank you so much. Give me a couple final tips, just things I want to think about as I try to get better at this over the next couple of months. The biggest thing to think about again, 19 steps, hand placement, stride length, stride frequency, big back, tall chest, uh, fill up with air, a lot of reps on the 225, stay focused, uh, keep your goals in mind, and uh, I'll see you next year at the Combine with a lot of reps. That is a lot of things to consider, but if I can get it all down, maybe next year I can be a surprise entry into the 2024 NFL Scouting Combine. Roger Goodell, pay attention, and teams keep watching. I got a new trainer.